The Rock. Tom Thomas is back! Hooray! So, how was your camping trip? Super! You've got to check out what I found. Rocks? That's just half of it. Wow! Is that a screw? It looks kind of strange. Because it got petrified millions of years ago. <laughs> Screws weren't around then. They came much later. And how do we know that? It could be the first one discovered. And maybe it's not just some screw. Know what I'm saying? Are you saying that we might be looking at... A Fixie! <laughs> Fixies believe that their ancestors came into being not that long ago, right when humans started inventing complicated devices. But what if that's not true? Maybe millions of years ago, before the dinosaurs, there were a different kind of Fixies that inhabited the Earth. And maybe there were people then, too. And Fixies weren't hiding from them. They were friends who they helped with everything. Together, they used to create inventions, construct buildings, and make scientific discoveries. But then there was some horrible catastrophe, and this whole civilization disappeared. And what if someday scientists find traces of that civilization? Then ancient Fixies will be discovered as well. That would be so cool. <laughs> My imagination ran away with me. You're right. He could be our great-great-grandpoos. Or our great-great-grandmas. Do you think maybe we could bring it back to life? We could screw it in somewhere. You get energy from electricity, right? What an idea! But what if our great great gets super scared because everything is different? We can build him a prehistoric world to wake up to! Time to bring him back to life. And you, Tom Thomas, disguise yourself. We'll break him like this. We need a different way to do it. We need more power for this. <laughs> there wasn't any electricity back then. That's why shocking him won't work. <laughs> Oh, our great-great ancestor, who came to us from an ancient home, be released from this stone. Be free! Why is it always so difficult with relatives? Wake up! Wake up! And what if... Everything. This is just a waste of time. Oh, uh, let's sing that song about the screw. Our song. No, Lick, it's never going to work. You don't know that. We can at least give it a try. If, if you, you think, think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just, just beware. beware. Everything will break without them with, with no little, little screws in there. Look, it's moving. It's impossible. It really did. If, if you, you think, think a screw is, is nothing, nothing, take it out, but just, just beware. Tom Thomas, hey. Well, how was your camping trip? Uh... Seems to me quite a success. Yeah. So, let's see what you found there. Do you know what this is? Well, it's a rock. It isn't. It's the stalk of a sea lily. You mean a flower? An animal who lives at the bottom of the sea. Its stalk makes it look like a flower, like a lily. On planet Earth, there are lots of rocks. Some of them are hiding deep below the surface, and others appear with volcanic lava. Remember those fairy tales where an evil witch would turn everything living into stone? Well, it's really happened, just without any magic. Some prehistoric plants and animals were petrified way back when, and they've remained that way ever since. Thanks to them, we can get an idea about what life was like on Earth millions of years ago. And this one's a devil's finger, the squid's ancestor. How do you know all this stuff? When I was your age, I collected fossils and rocks. Let's go. I'll show you my collection. Do you think any of our ancestors were sea lilies? Uh-uh. Shame. Why did I let myself get so carried away? There weren't any ancient fixies in the world. <sighs> but I... I still believe in them. They just haven't found the right 
rocket. But they'll find it. I know they will. The construction set. Tom Thomas. Huh? Why are you sitting in the dark? Because it looks better this way. Check it out. Oh, oh look at that. What a beautiful castle this is. It's like out of a fairy tale. No, it's from my construction set. I put it together myself. Bless. Oh, let's be knights. I love that game. And so does the old dragon. Lock the fair princess inside of the castle. I get to be the princess. Oh, where's the brave knight who will rescue me from the evil dragon? Hang on, I'll save you, Simka. No, look, you really don't look like a knight. You don't even have armor. Armor. Wait, hang on a second. A construction set lets you build lots of different things from a set of parts. Put them together like this, you've got a house. Like this, a car. Or like this, a spaceship. The parts might be made of metal and connected with screws. Some construction sets have plastic parts you click together. Other sets are models where the pieces are glued together. You can also find magnetic sets. Touch the parts together and magnetic attraction makes them stick. Beware, dragon! Already. And where is the castle? The planet has been attacked by robots! And they have destroyed the castle! Uh, and they've kidnapped me! And are you still a princess? Of course I'm still a princess! Oh, save me, brave knight! Right! <laughs> What's going on? This is a magnetic construction set, and your armor is made out of metal, so you got attracted to the magnets. <laughs> Tom Thomas, it's not fair. Unattract me. <laughs> okay. Oh, rescue me. Help me. You gotta save me. Hang in there. I'll be right back. I gotta change my costume. Don't even think about running away. And so it goes. Everyone's abandoned the poor princess. Oh. Simka's my older sister. That's why she thinks it's okay to get bossy with me. But I don't let it get to me because she's very smart and a quick thinker. She knows gadgets better than just about anybody. It's always interesting with Simka. And she's really smart, too. She gets nothing but A's at school. Everyone in our class loves her. Only she and Verda don't get along too well. It's because of fire. Well, you get it. Sometimes Simka can be way too strict with me. You can't do this. You shouldn't do that. But if an exciting adventure comes along, she's always right there with us. Simka's brave. She's got the skills. Yeah, she's always ready to take on a challenge. I've got an awesome sister. But just keep that between us. Because if you tell her, it might go to her head. How long am I supposed to sit here? Hey, anyone? Hey! Oh! Help me! Saka, you give that back. Leave, leave this room. Are you okay? I can't leave you alone for a minute. Yeah, I think we're 
are okay. Nola got here and saved me from Chusaka for real. Just like a real live knight. Oh, come on, good knight. I'm not kidding. You deserve to be one. And to protect every living creature from pesky Chusakas everywhere. I promise. To be a knight, Sir Nola! Hooray! 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 Kitty! The Bird Feeder. Sad. Just wait till he sees what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I guess he doesn't think you're funny. That's because he's cold out there. <gasps> he wants to eat, that's all. Maybe we should make a feeder for the poor bird. Do you know how to make a bird feeder? No, but we both know someone who knows everything. It's not easy for birds to find food under the snow. Luckily, many people come to the rescue. They build little houses for the birds, designed to hold food. The name for these houses are naturally bird feeders. Bird feeders can be made out of wood, plastic, or even something as simple as a milk or juice carton. Building a bird feeder by hand isn't hard to do at all. But building it is only one part of the work. What's most important is remembering to keep it filled with food. Well, shall we start? The bird feeder is ready! And what are we going to put in it? I got... An idea! <laughs> Adisa, I need some of your food for a little bird. You aren't greedy. Greedy! 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 I didn't know Adisa is greedy. Adis is greedy. You need to learn how to share. Adis is greedy. What, like there's not enough food? Not enough food, not enough food, not enough food, not enough. Wow, now there's two of them out there. Eat! There's enough food for everybody. Poor Adisa, poor Adisa. Let's bring him in here. We can open Adisa's a restaurant a for poor birds. poor little bird. Why did you scare the little birds away? That feeder's for them, get it? Just fly away. Shoo! Uh, 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 uh. He's bullying our friends. Hey, you leave! Leave! You'll never chase him away now. We'll see about that. Aha! Serves you right, Pigeon. It's not nice to bully little guys. Yeah, and how about big guys? It's all right to bully them. The poor Pigeon also wants some food. Food! Food! You sure? Sure! Winter can be beautiful, but also very cold. Animals have different ways to prepare for when the weather gets cold. Some birds gather into flocks and migrate to where it's warmer. You could almost say they're flying to a resort. Squirrels, hamsters, and chipmunks collect and store nuts, mushrooms, and pine cones. There are many people who don't have pantries that are as well stocked. Badgers and bears eat a lot of extra food in the fall and then go to sleep in their dens and burrows for the whole winter. Fish also sleep in the winter, only they're at the bottom of rivers and lakes. Frogs, snakes, and even wasps burrow in the ground while hares, foxes, and wolves grow thick coats that protect them from the freezing cold. 
Although it isn't easy for them to find food. So that will be your feeder. And that new one will be for the little birds. Hey, are you taking their food again? There you go. Huh. But those little birds, they'll probably never come back here. Look, Nolik! <gasps> they came back! Ah, uh, they're full and happy. Mm. It's so nice. Tadish! Tadish! The toilet. <laughs> hey, Tom Thomas, you're not allowed to drink water from the toilet. I'm not <laughs> drinking it. Then what? Washing up? In the toilet? Come on now. Then what are you staring at inside of there? Well, I think that the toilet's broken. The water just won't stop running. Yeah, so? What do you mean, so? We gotta conserve water. Simka, you're the one that taught me that. You're right, Tom Thomas. It's important not to waste water. But the problem in this toilet isn't where you were looking. Then where? Here in the tank, not the bowl. <laughs> Almost all toilets have tanks that are used for storing water. This water is flushed into the bowl when needed. Water flows into the tank through a water valve that has a float attached to it. As the water level in the tank rises, so does the float. And when there's enough water in the tank, the float closes off the valve and the water stops. But if the float happens to break, the water will keep running through the overflow tube into the bowl. We'll be back soon. <laughs> Look at this. I can't believe how beautiful it is. Ha! I see what's wrong here. This float that we're standing on, it got disconnected for some reason. That's why the water keeps pouring out. I see. And it's going down that tube into the bowl. Well, what's the problem? It's the float. It got disconnected. Can you get it back on? Nope. Sorry. Without Papoos, we can't fix it. We'll get Papoos. And you, Tom Thomas, you'll guard the door. Yeah, or someone could come and flush the toilet while we're working in the tank. And we'll get flushed away. To where? Straight into the sewer. And then it's bye-bye, Tom Thomas, forever. <laughs> The sewage system is a huge network of pipes that run underground. This is where the dirty water from sinks and the waste from toilets is sent. The sewage pipes then carry this dirty water to sewage treatment plants, where the water is cleaned before it is dumped into a river or the sea. Before the first sewage systems were invented, people would just dump their waste right out their windows onto the streets. Oh, the smell in the cities was just awful. Even the first sewage systems didn't put a stop to this terrible smell. This smelly problem wasn't solved until the invention of the modern toilet. At the bottom of the toilet is a bent pipe called the siphon that's filled with water that keeps the smell from getting back into the house. Don't ask me why, but no one goes through that door. It's a secret, Chusaka. Tom Thomas, ready to eat? Not now, Mom. Not even a cookie? <laughs> All right. Here's what I need you to do. You guard the door so no one flushes the toilet. And that goes for you, too. Oh, it's terrible how much water's getting wasted. It's a good thing you noticed it. It was Tom Thomas who spotted it. <laughs> well, let's get to work. Me? Dad! Don't flush the toilet! 
I wasn't planning on it. I was getting ready to take a shower. All right, just don't touch the toilet. What's wrong with it? It's just broken. Really? Let me check it out. Huh. No! Don't flush it! <gasps> Flush it! Dad, why? <laughs> why are you crying? We fixed it. You're here! I thought that you got flushed down into the sewer! We almost did, but Nolik saved us, both me and Papus. I'm Thomas. What was it that made you so sad? The toilet? Uh-huh. No need to be sad. The toilet's working just fine. Really? Yeah, I had to check it. <laughs> <laughs> now I need to go and check it too. The baby doll. Tula, you gotta get out. We can't all fit in here. This time we'll take a ride and next time you can. Again? Hey, don't worry. I'm gonna be getting such a cool car later today, Tula. Will it be a big one? It'll be big enough for all of you. Tom Thomas! Here, your toy came just like you wanted. Awesome! Wait, what is this? A baby doll? Uh the car. Oh, it's got to be some mistake. I'll find out for you. I'm calling them. It's good to be a kid. People take care of you, feed you, buy you toys, and read you bedtime stories. But in return, you have to listen to adults. Go to preschool, then school, and always remember to put on a hat. All kids dream about being a parent, at least for a little while, because moms, they're just superhuman. Human moms can do laundry, cook meals, iron clothes, and check their kids' homework all at once. Fixie moms can fix irons and hair dryers and can teach young fixies how they can do it. It's a shame that you can't become a parent before you grow up, but you can have fun pretending to be one. That's why girls like to play with dolls. Boys usually don't like it, but I don't see why. Dads can be really cool, too. What am I supposed to do with this now? I'm not some kind of girl who plays with dolls. <laughs> hey there, come on now. That baby doll's a real cutie. Why don't you put it down and we can get back to racing? <coughs> wait, wait. The baby's hungry. He needs to eat. Tom Thomas, help me. No, I won't. Won't you please? He's crying. Don't you hear? <coughs> Mama. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> That's all? After that boy? But what if something terrible has happened? My dolly's eyes were shiny. Toes and fingers tiny. He never acted whiny. I love my dolly so. Now my life is gloomy. How this happened to me? I can't find my cutie. My dolly's gone out oh, now. Oh no. Where'd my dolly go? Go. Where'd my dolly go? Go. 
honey, don't be upset about the car. It's going to get here soon. By the way, why did you put the doll in the cupboard? It was so hard to find. But is it still home? It's in the box over there. It's got to go back to the store. My poor dolly's gone. Ma, ma. My dolly! We're supposed to send him back today. Oh. Only I told Mom that I'd rather keep him. Hey, and what about your big new race car? Later. Did you do all this for me? You know... Papa! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Musical notes. Yeah! No! Yeah! No! Yeah! No! Hey, what a thoughtful conversation you're having there. Been going on for a while? Yeah! No! Simka, please tell Moloch what this is. A present, right? Uh-huh. From Katya. And it's got a secret code right here, you see? <laughs> There's no secret on there. They're just notes. Musical notes. Ha! See? I told you. Those squiggles could have been music. I don't believe you. Come on, two people said the very same thing. Simka is not a people. She's a fixie. Anyway, there are two of us. You're ganging up on me. We're not ganging up on you, Nolik. Music is something you can play or listen to with your ears. But that's not all. You can also write it down. When we want to write down words, we use letters. And if we want to write down music, we use special symbols called musical notes. There are seven notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, and ti. The higher the sound, the higher the note sits on a set of five horizontal lines called a musical staff. Notes that look like this last longer, and notes like this are short, quick notes. Thanks to sheet music, people can read music like reading a book, and then sing or play it. Until I hear you play me what you say is there, I won't believe you. On what? You know that we don't have any instruments. Try using spoons to play it. You think you're being funny? Hey, stop arguing. I know how we can play this song. We can use water. Water? Heh. <laughs> Let me get this straight. Are you trying to play the music, or are you trying to wash it? That's right. Pour it in there, Tom Thomas. Some more. Hear how the sound changes? Uh-huh. Now, start pouring water in this next glass until you hear the note called T. Stop! You got it! Now pour here? Yeah. We still have one note left. And what do I do if my mom comes home? What do I say I'm doing? That you're learning to play music while you're washing the dishes. That's it. That's the high dough. Now we have all the notes we need. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and do. Class. Go on, Tom Thomas, play. How about we all play it together? Musical sounds can be produced in a variety of different ways. Violins and cellos are played with a bow. When the bow is rubbed against the string, the string vibrates like it's shivering and that produces a beautiful sound. A guitar also has strings, but they make sound when they are plucked. And inside a piano are special hammers that hit the strings when the piano player presses down on the keys. Instruments like trumpets, trombones, flutes, and pipes make sound when air is blown through them. That's why they call them wind instruments. There are even instruments that make sound when they are rubbed by a wet finger. Try wetting your finger and carefully moving it around the rim of a wine glass. With a little bit of practice, you'll hear a lovely sound. Well, are you two ready? Yeah! yeah. Great! All together now! I know Happy this! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, Tom Thomas! Happy birthday to, to me! Tom Thomas, we also 
wish you a happy birthday. You see, Nolik, and you didn't believe that this was music. But I was the first to guess which song it is. Hey, thanks so much for helping me figure out Katya's present. And how about sending a song to Katya? Yeah. We can write down a musical note to a song about the Fixies. The Fixies? We can't. We can't write down the words. But if it's just the notes there, then it's no problem. Hooray! Want to play it? Of course we do. Contest. Ta da! Wait, that's a pastry! This is a pastry, Nolik, but this is an Egyptian pyramid. Oh, wow. Doesn't it look just like an anthill? Sure does. I remember when Grandpoos told us that inside of those is a labyrinth and a mummy of a sparrow. No, a pharaoh. The Egyptian pyramids are simply amazing ancient structures. The biggest one of them is the Great Pyramid of Cheops. It's more than 4,000 years old and over 100 meters tall, like a 40-story building. How it was possible to build such a giant way back then is still a mystery. There were no hoisting cranes in those days. Some people believe that the pyramids were built by aliens, but I have a feeling that they couldn't have been built without the Fixies' help. So, is there a labyrinth in there? Of course. Show me. You joking? I just put it together for the contest. No way I'm going to break this apart. Hey, isn't that a way in? Where are you going? I'm just going to look at the labyrinth. And the mummy. Mummy, what are you talking about? Well, which way now? Stop, you'll get lost. I won't get lost. So, I think I'll go this way. And then this way. Come back, Nolik. I was already here. And I was here. Oh. 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 I did get lost. You were right. What? Hey there. Do you know where Nolik is? In there. He went mummy hunting. And he got lost. Mummy? Whoa. A real one? Class. Don't. Nolik. Yoo-hoo. Are you in here? No. Then where? Who knows? Who builds labyrinths like this anyway? Hey, nobody asked you to go in my labyrinth. Who are you talking to in there? Digit. Fire and Nolik are inside, and I need to go to school now. Nolik! Fire! Well, I, for one, have never gotten lost in a labyrinth because I know the rule for getting out. You need to always keep your hand on the wall. I can find them for you. Where are you guys? Over here! <laughs> I forgot which of these walls I was touching with my hand. Did you find him? No, and I got myself completely lost in here. Tom Thomas, you've got school today, don't you? Yeah, I do. Only I got a pyramid full of fixies. <laughs> it's like an anthill. Mm-hmm. The first one wanted to go mummy hunting. The second one went looking for the first one. And the third for both. We're lost in here! And I've got school to get to. Wait, maybe you could just try to shake them out. Good idea! <laughs> <laughs> Joking! <laughs> you have string? Watch. This way you don't get lost. When you're going on a trip, think about how to keep from getting lost and how to find your way back. Don't just rely on maps and the GPS in your phone. Take a compass with you. It will show you the cardinal directions without needing phone service. You can also find north and south by looking at the sun, stars, or even an anthill in the woods. Take a good look. The slope that's gentler faces south, and the one that's steeper faces to the north. And if you find yourself walking through a labyrinth, don't get lost. Just walk with one hand always touching the wall, and eventually you'll get out. Another way to get through a labyrinth is to tie a rope at the entrance and unreel it along the way. Then 
in. You can follow its path back out. Here's the first one. And the second. And Nolik? Oh! Oh! Mummy, is it alive? It's me, Nolik. Uh. <laughs> but I couldn't find yours. That's because there's none in there. What? You mean I got lost in there for nothing? You were in such a hurry, you didn't listen to what I said. But without a mummy, how can you win? Oh, then maybe you could be my mummy. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, did you win a prize? Uh-huh. My pyramid won. And here's a special extra prize for being the only one of us who knew how to get out of the labyrinth. Again? Another box of those pastries? That's fine with me. I really love them. They're awesome. I wish Fixies ate food. What a shame. Then I'll give some to your mommy. <laughs> <laughs> the copy. Elisa! Don't worry, I found it. Uh, no, I didn't find it. Elisa! Elisa! I hear you! I'm coming, Professor Eugenius. Have you seen this umbrella anywhere? Looks like the professor lost his umbrella again. <gasps> More than one? Look at all these flyers! No, like, they're all copies of one flyer. Elisa prints lots of them so she can hang them up all over town. A copier is a device for making multiple copies of a single picture or document. An image that needs to be copied is placed on a piece of glass under a lid. The photocopier shines a bright light on it so it can take a clear picture. Then the image is printed onto paper with the help of special ink and a rotating drum. This way, you can make identical copies over and over again from one original until the ink or the paper runs out. What happened, Professor Eugenius? Oh, oh I, my briefcase, I can't find it anywhere. Oh, you're so absent-minded. First it was the umbrella, now it's the briefcase. Oh, is that for me? I don't do it on purpose. Well, we'll find your briefcase. I'll go design a new flyer for that, and I'll print those out, too. Ah, I just remembered. Remembered where you left your briefcase? Not that. This morning, I forgot to drink my tea. <laughs> so we need to find your tea as well. It's so dark inside of here. Quiet! Elisa's coming out. We have to hide. <laughs> Where is that one about the briefcase? Here's the flyer for missing keys, the one for the phone, the flyer for when the professor gets lost. Here, a missing briefcase. Excellent. Looks like she's gone for now. And where is Nolik? There's Nolik, in printed form. <gasps> he got stuck inside the copier. We have to go and save him. Save him? We all need to be saved, Tula. If Elisa takes these flyers and hangs them up, the whole city will find out about Fixies. So what do we do then? Wait, uh... Oh, we can use those liquid erasers to paint over Nolik. Here comes another one. Uh, 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 make sure he's covered. And here. Not everybody has the opportunity to enjoy seeing the paintings of the great masters. But thanks to copying technology, these pictures are well known all over the world. Young artists and sculptors can learn their craft by studying and copying the great art line of the past. It's good to have copies of important documents, just in case. What if the original of a document happens to get destroyed? At least, there will be a copy. Copies are generally very helpful, but not all copies are good. Some copies called forgeries are bad. A forgery is a copy of a picture, document, or even money that is presented as the original. 
Making forged copies is illegal. You can even be sent to jail for making copies like that. And a little bit here. so bright in there. I almost went blind. And we had to take every one of those copies and paint over all of them. So that humans won't find out about Pixies. It's a shame I wasn't there. I could have helped you out with that. Professor! I'm leaving! <sighs> there they are! <laughs> Elisa! <laughs> Elisa! Elisa! She just left to hang up the flyers. Yeah, and I found the briefcase in the umbrella myself. I have to call her and tell her. Uh, 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 where's my phone? Have I really lost it? Don't you worry, Professor. If you can't find it, Elisa's got a flyer for your phone already. <laughs> What's important right now is that Elisa doesn't go missing. <laughs> <laughs> the parrot. Adisa. Do you want a cracker? Wow, Tom Thomas, who is that? Simka Nolik, this is Adisa. My dad brought him from Africa. <gasps> I can't believe it, you've got a real parrot. Can he talk? My dad said that he can, but I haven't heard him yet. Well, let's see if he can. Okay, say Adisa's a good bird. No, he should learn my name. That would be awesome. Adisa, say, Nolik. That's my name. He doesn't want to talk about you, Nolik. Hmm, maybe he doesn't know how to speak human language. Then how can he talk? Parrots can repeat many of the different sounds that they hear. For instance, a dog's bark or the ring of the phone. Parrots can also mimic words or even whole sentences of human speech. But parrots don't understand the meaning of the words they are saying. They just repeat them like a music player. Hey, hello. Hey, hello. That's why you won't be able to have a real conversation with a parrot, even if it's the kind of parrot that can talk. All right, then let's have him repeat something. Hey, Adisa, Tadish, it's the Fixie's special sign. Say it, Fixie's had a special sign, Tadish. <gasps> My dad is back. Let's hide, quickly. Hi there. Well, how's it going? You two talking to each other yet? I can't get him to say anything at all. You can't? Hmm. Adisa, how are you? Adisa's a good parrot. <gasps> he wouldn't say anything before. Eh, he's used to talking around me. Adisa's a good parrot. Nolik, that's my name. Hmm? Whose name is Nolik? Uh, no. He was saying he's got no luck in this game. What kind of game? <laughs> Let's hide! Quickly! <gasps> hide! Uh, we were playing hide-and-seek. <laughs> With the parrot? Uh-huh. <sighs> Fixies have a special sign! <gasps> oh! Fixies have a special sign! Oh! What? Fixies? A special sign? Uh, no. It was physics. It's a special science. Uh, that's what we're studying about right now at school. You know, how special oh. physics is. Wow, that's impressive. Um, well, keep up the good work, son. The ability to repeat what humans say is not something unique to only parrots. Crows, starlings, and other animals can do it too. And besides animals, there are also machines that can repeat human speech. 
For instance, when you call somewhere and hear, leave your message after the tone. What you're hearing is a voicemail machine using a recorded voice to answer the call. Another example is the voice on trains and buses that is used to announce the stops. Those voices are usually recordings that are repeated over and over. Today, there are also artificial voices on computers, tablets, and smartphones that can read text and say it out loud. But even if a machine knows what you are saying, it can't know why you are saying it. Only people can figure that out. And fixies, of course. Huh? Tom Thomas, you're a hero. You really wiggled your way out of that one. And Adisha, bad parrot. He almost gave up our secret. Be careful with that parrot. I get it. Adisa, listen, you. Forget everything we said. And don't ever say no word. Okay? Yeah, nothing about the Fixies at all. Yeah, so if you meet a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. Got it? Oh, he's nodding. Looks like he understands. Let's get out of here so he'll forget about us as soon as possible. So if you meet a Fixie, please, don't let their secret out. Tadish, Tadish, Tadish. The iron. All done. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Professor Eugenia. Mm. Yes, Elisa. The award ceremony's in an hour. You need to leave soon. I remember, Elisa. What are you getting an award for? It's the... <laughs> it's the genius of the year. Not too modest, but fair. <laughs> and well-deserved. Wow. And they're giving it to you? Well, yeah. Will they show it on TV? <laughs> Why, of course. Class. And during your speech, can you say hi to me? And me, and me. And Zipka. Right. Say something like this. I'd like to send a big shout out to all my Fixie friends. Oh, that's a great idea. That way everyone can know about Fixies. Professor Eugenius, didn't I see an iron in here earlier? Hmm? Huh? Oh! Oh, come on, Elisa. There's no need for that. I'm not going to argue with you. You have to look just perfect. Otherwise, everybody is going to think that I don't take care of you. First, we'll let the iron warm up, and then I can iron your suit. The most essential part of an electric iron is called the heating coil. It's hidden inside the iron sole plate. When the iron is plugged into an electrical outlet, the coil gets hot and heats up the sole. People use a hot iron to remove the wrinkles from their clothing. Irons also have a water container. When the water gets hot, it turns into steam. The steam comes out through the holes in the iron sole, making it even easier to remove wrinkles. Wow, wow, that sure is hot. All that's left to do is pour some water into it. Professor, this is water, right? Yeah, yeah, it's water. That isn't water. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's not water, it's not water. Then what is it? Well, it's, uh, juice. Juice? Yeah, juice. Oh, no. The poor iron won't last. Phew. And it smells like crud. I broke the iron. It's awful. No, 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 <gasps> Elisa. Don't be so upset. Don't be so upset. It's the genius of the year ceremony. And you'll be in a wrinkled suit in front of the whole country. Oh, I won't survive. <laughs> Elisa, hang in there. Be careful. Elisa. <laughs> Oh, Elisa. Professor Eugenius, are you all right? Oh, couldn't be any better. We're going to go fix that iron for you. And while we're doing that, you go fix Elisa. That would be great. <gasps> Look over there. I'll fix the contact. You and Nola can scrape that burnt juice off the iron. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Elisa, Elisa, please wake up. Uh... We did it. Your iron is fixed. 
Elisa, you should see the iron. It's working. What? And I'm just lying around here? I have to hurry. Where's the iron and your suit? Wrinkled clothing is not very beautiful. And that's why, since ancient times, people have been trying to find different ways to get rid of wrinkles. For example, long ago, people would put their wrinkled clothing under a heavy, flat rock. In ancient Rome, people used to beat their crinkled garments with a metal hammer. And in China, fabric was ironed with hot frying pans. Irons with a shape like what is used today appeared during the Middle Ages. They were made out of cast iron and needed to be heated up on a stove before they could be used. Later, people came up with irons that were heated by putting hot coals inside. And finally, in the 19th century, a convenient electrical iron was invented and has been used ever since. And the prize for Genius of the Year goes to... Professor Eugenius! Bravo! Bravo, Professor! I thank you. I give my sincerest thanks to you. And may I take this opportunity to send my greetings to Fix? Uh, uh, uh to all the fix -assists. Just give me the prize. Oh, that was quick thinking. Brilliant. He is just astounding. Perfection from head to toe. <gasps> Well, practically perfect. <laughs> the television. Now watch carefully. First I put some of the yellow. Then I add some of the blue. Mix them together. And now we've got the color green. Isn't that great? Class! And it's not just paint either. Your television works by mixing colors, too. Really? No way. That's embarrassing. Nolik, you should know that by now. We live inside of that television, together with Papas and Masia. Come on! The picture on a TV screen is made up of tiny glowing dots that are either red, green, or blue. When blue and green dots are glowing together, we see the color light blue, like in a clear blue sky. When green and red mix, we see a yellow sun. And when all three colors shine brightly together, then we see white on the screen. It may be hard to believe, but it's true. All of the colors on the screen are made up of only three colors. Red, green, and blue. So everything that's on the TV screen all comes from three colors. Red, green, and blue. Isn't that great? Where do you learn all this stuff, huh? Actually, don't you think it's about time we got you a new TV? What do you say? Sure. <sighs> Great. And then I'll take this one with me to work. We just started shooting a new show about old things. Hooray! I'm going to get an awesome new TV. Simka Nolik. Did you hear that? Are you here? They must have gone home for something. <gasps> Wait a sec. Their home is... Their, their home is in the television. This was such a nice home for us. It's okay. We'll move into one of the other TVs here. The one in the living room? Why not? It's a nice new one with a huge flat screen. We're gonna have to leave the sofa behind. What? There's just not enough room in that TV. Then I'm not going to move there. Then where? Into the fridge? No, thank you. My nose is running. How about the stove? And what about us? You're the one that says that a stove is off limits for kids. Maybe the microwave will do. No, it's dangerous there. Then, in the piano. What piano? There's no piano in Tom Thomas's apartment. What a shame. A piano is the best place of all to call home. Huh. It looks like he already put us into a box. We're trapped. Good. Dad! Hey, Dad! I changed my mind. I really don't want to get a new TV. Hmm. Why don't you want a new one? I'm just used to this one. You're a junk collector. <laughs> uh-huh. 
Just like you, Dad. People have always dreamt of seeing things that are far, far away. All of us have heard fairy tales about crystal balls and magic mirrors. But the magic of television began only a hundred years ago. The screens on the first TVs were so small that people had to attach magnifying glasses to them to make the picture big enough for watching. Ever since those first TVs, both the outside and the inside of this amazing device continue to change. Bulky picture tubes have been replaced by electronic chips. Screens have grown wider and wider as TV sets have changed from big heavy boxes to flat light screens that can hang on the wall like a picture. And someday, real soon, it's quite possible that TVs will be made to roll up like a rug and people will be able to carry them anywhere. All right, I'll put it back, but under one condition. If it breaks, we'll buy you a new one right away. Yeah, sure. We'll never let it break, right? Never, never ever! Well, that's that. The color is completely wrong, see? I guess we're going to have to throw it out after all. Wait, wait, wait. I know how to make it work perfectly. Watch this. One, two, and three. How did you do it? I just mixed the three colors together, like I told you, red with green and blue. Teesh! Chocolate. Thomas, unwrap it already. In the morning, Nolik. I really want to see the toy that's inside. Be patient, Nolik. That's all. I'm going to bed. Please don't touch it, okay? And you won't open it without me, right? But that's a deal. <sighs> Good night, Nolik. Uh-huh. What are you doing in here? Me? Well, I was... Oh, it's a chocolate ball with a toy inside. <gasps> How interesting. Yeah, totally. Let's unwrap it and take a look. We can't. Not until Tom Thomas comes in the morning. But if we're real careful, he won't notice. A chocolate confection. Yeah. A piece of perfection. <gasps> Perhaps I'll oh. give that shining. <laughs> Took a look. Tom Thomas won't be happy at all when he finds out you touched a chocolate ball. And you? Like you didn't touch it? I didn't. Oh, then what's that, Nolik? <gasps> chocolate? Absolutely. It's 100% natural milk chocolate. It says so right here. <laughs> the key ingredient in chocolate is cocoa beans. They are roasted, crushed, and ground. After that, the ground beans are pressed to extract the oil from them. If you mix butter, cocoa, and sugar, you'll get dark chocolate. And if you add some milk to it, then you'll get milk chocolate. Then you just warm it up, pour it into molds, and cool it down. You can add raisins or nuts into chocolate. Sometimes chocolate is even made with flavors like flowers or salt. Chocolate wasn't originally for eating. It was used in a drink made by mixing roasted beans with water and then adding hot peppers. Not every adult could drink it, let alone a child. Today, chocolate is a favorite treat the world over for children and adults alike. How can we put it back together? How about scotch tape? Come on! We'll start by warming up the chocolate so it softens up and then use that to make a new ball. And then to make it hard again... Yeah, we just cool it off. My chocolate confection has got an imperfection. Half of it's gone into thin air. But this is expected when chocolate goes unprotected. First you have got it, then it's not there. 
take off the wrapper without Nolik. You really can't do it without him? I can't. I told Nolik I wouldn't. Mmm, your chocolate is gonna be delicious. Go on, you can eat a little. Hmm, if you say so, I'll eat the chocolate. But we won't open the toy without Nolik. Mmm, good chocolate. Come on, don't you want to know what the toy is? We won't tell. All right, just a peek, and we'll close it right up. What is this for? Tish! Nolik? Really? How did you get in there? Surprise! Hmm. You were in the container, the container was in the chocolate ball, and the yep. ball... That's just impossible. Ah, he went and got you two to help. We helped a little. Hang on, Nolik. You promised not to touch the chocolate till morning. And you promised not to open the toy without me, right? Oh my <laughs> <laughs> my friend. 